Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regime Tedicon video, we're going to be running through the final GeForce GTX 1080 Ti specifications, and also discussing Ryzen, specifically a 1080p gaming performance, because a few more details have emerged from AMD, plus as well, I've conducted a couple of my own benchmarks, and I've also ran into yet further issues with the memory clocks on Ryzen. I'll give some insight into that as well. But first things first, let's talk about the 1080 Ti. So, we knew most of the stuff anywho, but there are a couple of new pieces of news. Specifically, the base clock is 1480, and the boost clock is about 100 megahertz higher. It's 1582. The memory clock runs over 1000 megahertz higher, so despite the fact that it does have a narrower memory bus, that's 384 for the Titan compared to just 352 for the Ti, it does have actually 4 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth higher, that is 484, and actually uses slightly less power as well, 220 watts, and it will retail at 700 US dollars, which is quite the chunk of change. Another new piece of news is it's going to be utilizing the GP102350 core. This is compared to the 400 core, which is found in the Titan. And of course, it is manufactured on a 16nm FinFET process. Same amount of TMUs, that is 224. However, it has slightly fewer ROPs at just 88. Videocards.com have a rather nice comparison of the PCBs of the two cards, and it's pretty obvious that they look almost identical. You could pretty much say they're twins, however there are a couple of small issues, or rather differences, on the power distribution of the boards, and also the absence of a, well, DVI connector. Most likely that's for aiding in cooling of the card because it's not like the power can, uh, I'm sorry, the DVI connector is that much of a big deal. And also conspicuous by its absence, but not exactly surprising, is the fact that, of course, one memory module is missing on the front of the GPU, which is, of course, synonymous with the fact it has a narrower memory bus. Obviously, we know that it's going to be launched on March the 10th, which is not too long away. However, AIBs, so that would be the MSIs, that would be the ASUSs, the EVGOs, and so on, have not exactly had a, lo a lead in time to develop custom designs. And through the grapevine, there's been some complaints that actually some people are pissed. Uh, some people working at these larger companies, these AIBs, are pissed at NVIDIA uh, because they're really pushing their founders edition. In short, NVIDIA are basically saying, if you want a... 1080 tie on launch or anywhere close to launch well golly gosh you're gonna to have to go with us because you don't really have a choice so we're gonna to have to wait to see what the custom variants happen so anywho um i want to talk a little bit more about ryzen so amd have gotten some shtick when it comes to the whole gaming performance at 1080p quite a number of you have messaged me regarding this situation and honestly, um, I've not gotten back to quite a number of you because I'm still doing research on it myself. And today has been just one of those days. It has major internet issues. I think it was the area. Because even at Amy's house, the internet was just a load of garbage. And on t I'm talking not like megabytes a second or a few hundred kilobytes a second. I'm literally talking kilobytes a second. As in one or two kilobytes a second download. Which is ludicrous. Um... And basically, the PC is now built, Windows is installed, I've got some games installed as well. However, there are still issues with memory timings. Now, from what I gather, I'm using the X370 Asus board, Prime X370 Pro. I was about to say the Pro X370 Prime. Anyway, that's just the kind of day I'm having. Essentially, the board is fine, it boots and it loads, but there are definitely issues, and I believe they're memory-based. So basically, there's 3000 MHz RAM that I've got installed in the board. Ryzen does not support 3000 MHz as a divider. It will support like 2933 and it will support 3200. The issue is, however, that the board is really dicey to get running over 2133 MHz. Now, from what I can tell, and doing the Googling and talking to a couple of people, it appears that it's a BIOS related, not physically to do with the board and certainly not to do with the chip. There is a 
BIOS that I do not have access to. A few members of the press got it, not many. And that is the 0 0.50505, I think it was. I'm sorry. My brain is mush. So basically, I'm running 0502, and you might say, well, just download the 0504. The problem is, and I forgot to mention this yesterday, it actually has runaway heat problems where some people reporting the, T the CPU on idle gets up to like 60 or 70 degrees, and that is not Ryzen's fault. That is the board's fault, just to clarify. So I figure because people are still reporting that the memory issues are still present, despite the fact that Asus assuring us that the BIOS update would fix that, I figured, you know what, I'm just going to stick to 0502, and I've emailed Asus today, so obviously they've not gotten back to me yet, and requested, uh, telling them a member of the press, requested the 05 BIOS, and we can just wait and see. So what the symptoms are, essentially, is you're getting into Windows, for example, and a couple of scenarios happen. A, the system doesn't boot. Actually, that's just what happened to me now, and to be honest, at 9... A clock in the uh, in the evening. I'm excuse me. I just couldn't be bothered to once again reset the BIOS and go back into it and then reset all the options. I was just like, you know what? That's enough for today. I tap, um, or the system will boot and it will not actually. Um, despite the fact you select, for example, two nine three three megahertz, it won't actually work. It will be like the option selected, but it's almost like if you set an option in game and then you have to reboot. For that setting to take effect, that's what happens. So it's a bit weird. And um, basically, the other thing that happens is that occasionally the RAM timings, sorry, the RAM speeds will increase, but the but the the but the actual timings are very loose, and uh, it's just it's just a bit messed up at the moment. And it's purely the fault of the BIOS. And there are a couple of benchmarks, as you can see, running through at the moment on screen. But essentially, I don't believe them. Like, I don't believe it's the fault of Ryzen. And I'll give you a few ideas of what I mean by that. Um, Robert Halleck and uh, Lisa Sue, as well as a couple of other folks at AMD, have been saying, you know, here's the issue. Um, first of all, I think it's important for me to know the picture of the processor. Most people have 1440... 40p and a 4k display deserve to know how their potential processor will perform on that monitor we're not shying away from 1080p results and we clearly have some work to do with games developers to optimize uh, invest in these vital optimizations so that we can dramatically improve on an application's performance and they are apparently still working with companies like oxide bethesda and so on and we have proven that zen has a uh, performance in the ipc and many the, the reviewers today proved that at 1080p. There are no architectural reasons why the remaining titles are performing as they are. Additionally, John Taylor, from who is the Vice President of Technology and Product Marketing, says that we are supporting 300 developer kits with game development studios to optimise current and future games with all Ryzen CPUs, and we are on track for 1,000 developer systems in 2017. For example, uh, Bethesda at GDC yesterday announced a strategic relationship with AMD to optimise through Ryzen CPUs, primarily through Vulkan. And Oxide are also going to be doing the same thing, and multiple other developers as well. I won't fr read through the entire um, quotes because there's way too many. Brad Wardell has said that Oxide Games is incredibly excited to be uh, what we're seeing from Ryzen. Our nitrous game engines working, we are working to scale existing and future game technology to take full advantage of the 16 threads. Creative Assembly through uh, Total War have said they're committed to reviewing optimizing games on the Ryzen, which is fantastic. Uh, Robert Halleck has also said, in um, addition to this, once again, this was on uh, Reddit. In addition to Lisa's comments, there are a few variables which could affect a performance. Early motherboard BIOSes were certainly troubled. Disabling unrelated features would turn off some of the cores, setting memory. Overclocks on some boards would disable boosts. Some BIOS revisions would plain produce universally suppressed performance. Yup, I'm going to go with that. I might actually still uh, go to the 502 BIOS just to check it out. Ryzen benefits from disabling high precision event timers. For those wondering, I have done that. This timer resolution of HEPET, HEPET, I don't know the best way to pronounce that acronym, 
can cause the observer effect on subtract full performance. This is a BIOS option or a f effect which can be disabled from Windows shell command. Just for those wondering, I have disabled it in device manager and used a shell command, uh, command shell, excuse me. So, you know, it's definitely disabled on mine. And also high performance power profile has been enabled on mine. Um, he said that high performance power mode allows the CPU to update its voltage slash clock speed in one millisecond intervals versus the 30 milliseconds that it takes in balance mode. That's what our driver will accomplish. Apologies for the confusion. Um, and she has also said that new architectures require time to optimize since Zen is a from scratch design. It requires an optimization. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that, of course, they've been pushing Cinebench because it's pretty obvious that it of course scales well across multiple cores so just to give you my final thoughts on this because honestly it's quite late here i've been doing testing especially on the memory side of things almost all day and um yeah so i will be naturally pushing into this more to be honest most of today has been getting the system up and running popping data data over getting the benchmarks uh, software installed getting the games installed um, you know, updating Windows, installing Windows, and just basically screaming in rage because the internet just wasn't working at points, which slowed me down for about two hours, which just was sucky, but, you know, unfortunately, it's just the nature of things. Uh, tomorrow, I will be, of course, doing a lot more benching, and over the next couple of days, I'll be doing a little more testing. Basically, speaking to you, um, we will be continuing to push this. I don't believe that Ryzen has issues. I believe it is just the issue of it is really early silicon. I, I, and by early silicon, I mean it's just basically been released. And I fully believe either software-related issues, in other words, the games have not been optimized. B, it's having issues with the BIOS. Or C, there are some software problems itself with let's say drivers and what have you in fact just to give you an idea how early some of these drivers are i installed the uh, chipset drivers and i am not joking when i say that it actually said your graphics card is ready for use which i don't think is actually accurate considering i'm running a gtx 1080 in the rig that's right it actually told me the crimson software suite told me it was the a graphics card was ready it was just a bit bizarre and honestly just for a second i double checked the driver that i had downloaded the wrong one i knew i hadn't because obviously it said you know ai software suite blah 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 but it was just like okay fair enough anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video apologies it's been a bit of a hickledy pickledy one but um quite frankly i'm so tired i just don't have the will in me to do anything more anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now